Welcome to a new season of Leadership Live podcast, where talented people become extraordinary leaders. I'm Daphna Horowitz, and I'm here to help you cut through the noise and talk about real leadership issues, down-to-earth, solid, caring, and confident leadership. No theory, no pie in the sky, no frills or fluff, because this is what the world needs most right now, for you to lead with confidence, clarity, and impact so that you can build a business that builds people, grows profit, and makes a difference. You're in for a treat on this podcast today because I have to say that after we finished recording the podcast, Liam and I stayed on and had a conversation for another half an hour because there were still so many questions that I had and there's so much more to discuss about asynchronous organizations, asynchronous ways of working, and when does synchronous come in? And when is it important to really be talking on the same timeline? And I had a lot of questions about that. So I wanted to share some of those insights with you, and then you can listen to this interview and get a a feeling for what uh, it means to run an asynchronous company. But one thing that came up for me is, and, and in our discussion, that's really, really important, is that Everything that's work related and metrics related and performance related can be managed and done really efficiently and effectively asynchronously. But anything that's related to EQ, anything that's related to the human element needs to be handled synchronously in a conversation, in the same room, dealing with the issues. And the things that came up, and this was a question I asked Liam after we finished the recording is, what about poor performers? What about hiring and firing? What about, those conversations, so the the onboarding part, once you've hired someone, when someone's not performing and you need to let them go, are you going to do that asynchronously as well? When someone's in conflict with someone else, I don't get on with her, or he said something to me that was really offensive. Do, Do you deal with those asynchronously too? And he said, absolutely not. The human element, the human discussions, the conflict resolutions, the poor performance, you need to get on a call and do that in a synchronous way. So while remote work is a fascinating concept and definitely something that's here and here to stay. And as Liam shares, uh, we're expecting that 60% of companies will go into remote work situations in the next three years. Uh, We also need to remember that the human element is really important and there are certain conversations. That's certainly what I took away from our conversations. There are certain things that do need to happen synchronously. That means at the same time, in the same place. And also something that's really important is when you are striving for those synchronous meetings to do it in the best way possible. So cameras on or in person if possible. Um, But the way of thinking about remote work and asynchronous ways of work is really a fascinating conversation that we had. And I'm going to let you go ahead and listen to this interview now. It was really, really a lovely, fascinating, interesting conversation. Welcome to Leadership Live podcast. I am so excited to be hosting Liam Martin today. He is the co-founder of Time Doctor and co-organizer of the world's largest remote conference, Running Remote. He has co-authored a book, focused on remote work methodology. And this is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. I just wanna say that I can see that Liam is so passionate about giving workers the flexibility to work wherever they want, whenever they work, whenever they want, and wherever possible, he encourages others to work remotely and actively promotes remote work. And this is such a relevant current topic for today that I'm excited to be talking to you, Liam, so that you can shed some light on your own story and also let's debate a little bit about what's going on in our environment today in terms of remote work. So welcome. Lovely to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm always interested to get into healthy debates about remote work. Yeah, let's do it. (laughs) Um, So let's start with this. How did this whole working remotely start for you? Where did it begin? So I, I've been working remotely for almost 20 years. And uh, I, the first company that I started was an online tutoring business. And I started it because I had no other choice. So I was in graduate school at McGill University. I'm looking at my master's degree right now <laughs> behind my camera. It was one of the most expensive pieces of paper I've ever got and probably one of the most worthless as well. Mm. I was... I started a teaching a class. So most people don't know that 
most first and second year classes are taught by graduate students. They're not actually taught by professors. And <clears throat> at the beginning of that class, I had about 300 students. By the end, I had less than 200. I also had the worst academic reviews in the history oh. of the department. <laughs> Devastating. Yeah, I remember walking into my supervisor's office and I said, I don't think I'm very good at this. And he said, no, you're not. And I said, okay, so what do you think I should do? He said, well, you know, you got to keep doing this teaching thing for the next 10, 20 years if you want to do anything fun. So six weeks later, I threw a master's thesis under his door. I was out into the real world and I started wow. a online tutoring business because I recognized that I could actually make more money tutoring than I could actually teaching at university. Uh, and that wow. actually boiled into another big problem that I had, which was that company was relatively successful. I had dozens of tutors throughout North America and Europe, and we were specifically teaching people uh, pre-med prerequisites. I don't know if you know this, but if you don't get effectively a 4.0 grade point average for about six courses, which are your prerequisites for medical school, you can't actually get into the best medical schools. So they mm -hmm. just immediately cut you out. So I was making a lot of money wow. doing that. So and, can I ask you, you took something that you're really not good at, decided to take it into a different kind of format mm -hmm. and made a relative success out of it. Well, I think I was, I was bad at lecturing, but I was really good at teaching. So okay. the, I think those are two separate issues and, and we don't want to necessarily get into a debate about post-secondary education <laughs> and whether or not that's successful or unsuccessful. Right. I think people should walk their own path on that, on that one. For me, it was not the right direction to take um, primarily because an entrepreneurial mind, unfortunately, doesn't can't withstand the speed of the feedback loop inside of academia. Okay. So in the 10 years that it would take for me to do a study in academia, yeah. I can do the same thing in two months inside of one of my companies. And that's the real magic for me and, and why I decided to get out of it uh, very quickly. But okay. the tutoring business, I mean, it was going pretty well, but then I ended up I remember this very clearly. I was having lunch with a friend of mine and I chipped one of my teeth on one of my back molars. And so I went to the doctor's office or sorry, the dentist's office to be able to figure out what the heck was going on. And, you know, you, you sit in the chair, they've got the big light on you. And uh, the dentist took a look at me and he gasped. And it's never a good thing when a health professional gasps when they're looking at you. And he said, Liam, what tooth are you talking about? You've chipped all of your teeth. Wow. He thought that I had pancreatic cancer. I didn't have pancreatic cancer. I was working 16 hours a day and grinding my teeth at wow. night wow. inside of this business. Mm -hmm. So I recognized at that point that I needed to be able to delegate and elevate this mm -hmm. organization. I needed to be able to move from an entrepreneur to an executive. And that was a major challenge for me. But once that was over, I really kind of figured out the secrets of remote work and how to be able to execute on it properly, which I know almost the entire planet in 2020 went kind of emergency remote exactly. work mode. And they're exactly. probably going through the same problems that I had so, in yeah. that dentist chair. When was this that you're talking about with your tutoring business that was online? That was uh, 2007, 2008. Okay. Okay. So yeah. yeah, more than a decade before we were launched into this uh, virtual world. Yes. And was online learning quite a thing in the US at the time or is it quite uh, unusual no. to begin a business was, in that? It was definitely unusual. Uh, I mean, Skype worked about 70% of the time. So, you know, yeah, I know. I you have to turn your video days. off. Everything yeah, is it, was, <laughs> it was not the best situation, but I recognized that for me, at least, I could put eight hours of tutoring into a full day. Whereas if I was doing it in person, I would go and tutor one student, then I would drive to the next student and I would tutor them. And yeah. so this was the real interesting thing for me, which was I effectively doubled my uh, my my revenue yeah, uh, per student sure. by doing from it virtually. Yeah, and I remember coaching for sure is one of those uh, industries that I don't know if we start pioneered this whole online work story or remote work story, but I was coaching people overseas. So when you coaching globally on projects if you're working with a global organization and they have different uh, locations as coaches we're actually coaching people by, by telephone so not even uh. being able to see them on camera 
just using regular calls. Teleconferences were done also, regular calls, voice calls. It wasn't all with this amazing, sophisticated technology that we have today. And then when mm -hmm. everybody was, we'll fast forward to 2020 and everybody was catapulted into this remote work world and all of a sudden needing to do teleconferencing and I mean, video conferencing. It was a big uh, aha moment that we can do this. Whereas I had been working virtually for such a long time. I've been using, I, I always say I should get some reward for Zoom because I was one of the early adopters paying for my Zoom subscription uh, when nobody knew what Zoom is. And today Zoom is part of the vocabulary. So it's really mm -hmm. interesting, really, really interesting to see how when you're forced into a situation, people have to learn as they go along and you have to adopt it and you just make do. So you're saying you had all these lessons beforehand that you could apply to the world of work today. So let's hear a little bit about those as well, about yeah, what you've learned, where you're at at the moment and how you're using remote work. Sure. So, I mean, catapult, by the way, is an understatement of what happened. <laughs> what would February, you call it? <laughs> an exponential launch. Yeah. Had, uh, so in forced, March, but it was forced. <laughs> yeah. In February of 2020, 4% of the US workforce was working remotely. And by March, it was 45% of the US workforce. Wow. So that's an exponential jump forward. That's a 10x jump. 75% mm -hmm. uh, of people making over $100,000 a year were working remotely. So there was also a divide between the rich and the poor in that transition as well. And that's the biggest transition since the Industrial Revolution. But the Industrial Revolution took 80 years, and we did that in March. So it was effectively remote yeah. at gunpoint, yeah. who I lovingly exactly. like to call the pandemic panickers, the people who <laughs> really were just calling me up on the phone saying, I have 500,000 employees. I've just currently deployed them remotely. What do I do next? Yeah. Right. And so when inside of that, I felt like I had a life preserver and I was trying to save everyone, but I couldn't call everyone at the same time. So that's why I really the book is so relevant uh, and why I worked on it for the past year and a half is when I was working with these remote pioneers, companies that were remote before the pandemic, companies like GitLab and GitHub and uh, Buffer and Coinbase and Shopify and Airbnb, all of these companies that are incredibly remote friendly, they all had one single thing in common that is very counterintuitive to almost everyone that operates a business today. And that counterintuitive point that I touch on in the book and I teach mm -hmm. people how to do is what's called asynchronous management, which is the ability to be able to manage people without directly interacting with them face-to-face -face or through video or any other form of synchronous communication. So as mm -hmm. an example, uh, me and uh, Vaishali was the one that probably booked this call between the two of us. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with Vaishali day in, day out for six years. I have met her in face or on video five times during that period. <laughs> wow. So she has the autonomy to be able to do her job inside of the organization, and I have the autonomy to do mine. And the platform is the manager, not necessarily the individuals inside of that organization. Okay. So tell us more about that. How is the platform the man? How do you manage that? How do you stay in sync? How do you make sure communication works? Because then you're saying even your verbal communication is limited if you've only gone into a virtual platform to see each other five times over six years. Sure. So there's three main pieces to this, which is basically democratized workflows, um, systematization, and the ability to be able to interact with people without necessarily um, speaking, to basic, them. <laughs> speaking to them. And what the actual overlay inside of all of this is a concept by my friend Cal Newport called Deep Work. Mm -hmm. So one I of the love that insights, book, by the way. I think it's an awesome, awesome book. And yeah, yeah it's, it's so Deep Work is effectively uh, asynchronous management is Deep Work at scale. Mm -hmm. So how do you optimize every single individual to have everything at their disposal to solve difficult problems which by the way is the point of a corporation right 100%. what does a corporation do it is its only job is to solve difficult problems i.e innovate if you can innovate faster than your competitors you win every single day uh so asynchronous organizations and organizations that implement asynchronous management 
they optimize every single individual to be able to have everything at their disposal without necessarily reaching out to someone else in order to be able to get that information. So all the systems, the processes, the project management systems, the communication protocols, they're all in a, they're all packaged in a way that immediacy is not required inside of the organization because you can actually search for every single answer that you're looking for inside of the organization and everything is recorded and documented so that you can then say hey yeah i want to be able to go and figure out what happened two years ago inside of our executive meeting because uh we're doing this current thing now and i don't really know why we're doing it that way oh well susan two years ago decided to make that decision and we fired susan three months afterwards because she was really bad at her job. Maybe we should actually go in and reassess as to why we made that decision and why we're currently carrying that decision forward. So you also inside of asynchronous organizations, because everything is recorded and documented, you can act as an archeologist inside of the organization. So I could mm -hmm. drop you into our company right now and you could see all the recorded Zoom calls. You could see the Asana minutes that were documented inside of our project management system. You could see, you know, inside of our, our HR tool, when someone started their job, when they actually were elevated to another position inside of their job, these all come together to create an environment where the office is digital. And this is a really empowering moment because then everyone can basically work on getting deep work done inside of the organization, as opposed to mm. waiting for a manager to tell you what to do. Or as I can just imagine a lot of people thinking, because um, this is what happens is, you know, one person needs to do their work and they need information from IT and HR, wherever else it may be. And they're sitting, you know, popping off an email. Here's what I need, um, waiting for the information to come back to them before they can continue. Um, and in some ways also absolving themselves of the responsibility of going to look for that information or seeing what they can do to make that information happen so that's really so i've sat i've sat inside of asynchronous organizations that completely adopt this methodology at scale mm. and so it is a change in methodology it is a change in methodology there is absolutely. a lot of background work that needs to happen in order to have all of these processes um organized and systematized in a way that people can go and search for their solutions but what happens if you're working on a project and you need a certain output that has not yet been it's not part of the systemization it's something that's new and you need information or you need to draw something out that somebody else does need to help you with yeah so inside of the system we really want to be able to make sure that it's democratized so in all of the wikis, and that's, this is effectively what we're talking about, <clears throat> is process documents that are digitized. And the biggest one on planet Earth that's open source right now is about.gitlab.com about slash handbook. Mm -hmm. And so it's about 8,000 entries and absolutely everything is in there. It's searchable. You can go and figure out answers to any particular question that you're looking for. Um, but the beauty of it is if there's something that hasn't been written before, it self qualifies for itself. So mm -hmm. if you've identified that no one actually has written this thing inside of the process, like um, I'll give you a perfect example. Six mm -hmm. months ago, we built a lot of TikTok process documents, right? How to produce a TikTok on a TikTok channel. And because it was a new medium that we really wanted, a new channel that we wanted to get into inside of the marketing organization. And so we actually reward people for building out all those processes they get paid uh and it's a real self-motivator inside of the organization because you actually get bonuses if you build processes and more importantly you actually get more of a bonus if you edit and optimize a process that already exists so it's a self-evolving mm -hmm. organic organism that um, effectively rewards people for optimizing the the process document which at the end of the day is the manager fundamentally. So inside of um, some of these companies that I've gone to, and I would be asking questions like, okay, well, you know, how do you run your sales meetings? Oh, this is, and they'd send me a link. How does, how does that salesperson get their numbers back? And they'd send me a link. And then after about eight or nine of these, uh, I got pulled off to the side by the head of remote saying, hey, you're being very disruptive towards other workers. Remember, <laughs> 
immediacy is not what we do. And you should have spent two minutes actually going into our database to be able to figure out the answers to your problems. To be able that's to how asynchronous organizations work. Mm -hmm. And that's the mm -hmm. difference is you think that you're speeding up the organization by asking other people for an answer to a question, when in reality, you're actually at scale slowing down the organization because you're disrupting everyone else's deep work. Yeah, yeah. That's that's incredible. And and then so your organization does that helps a company become asynchronous by creating all these uh, systemized processes. And I, wouldn't that, uh, no, okay. that, I wouldn't say we do that. No, I wouldn't say that we do that. I just wrote a book on the subject. Mm. Uh, I w there are really no consultants at this point on asynchronous right. management, okay. unfortunately, okay. ironically, there's no book written on asynchronous management. It's so new. For sure. And For sure. the the remote first organizations, the remote first pioneers, what they had to do is, I mean, we have team members in 43 different countries all over the world, multiple time zones. It is absolutely impossible for us to be able to have a single synchronous phone call across all of those different time zones. So we are forced into asynchronous mm -hmm. management. It was, by, you know, it was something that it wasn't by design. It was something that we were forced into. And I just happened mm -hmm. to kind of find this interesting phenomenon of these organizations that were just basically running without people really directly interacting with yeah. their subordinates. That and is so crazy. I mean, it's a crazy that, thought. Yeah. If you think yeah, about it, 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 it's definitely, I, I definitely, for people that haven't been attached to this, it's a very crazy thought, but here are the advantages, complete another autonomy for every individual inside of the organization. You know, the numbers are what lead the organization. So okay. the platform is the manager, not necessarily the individual. Okay. And managers so aren't really liked all that often. Yeah, true, right. true. Okay, okay. So what about what about connection? What about me? So you're saying there's no meetings. Like if, if a new idea comes about and someone wants to implement something new in the organization, you're not going to have a meeting about it to there are discuss meetings, but they're okay. asynchronous meetings. Meaning? So give me so run me something through something. Called, give me an example. So I'll give you an example. We have something every week called the silent meeting inside of our inside of my direct reports for the eight other executives that work inside of the organization. And every single week. We boot up Asana. And by the way, if you go to runningremote.com slash book, we've got all of those templates and processes that I talk about. Uh, so you can go and check them all out. But we have a silent meeting. We we run a version of EOS. So we put in all of our issues. Okay, is it just for people who Asana. don't know, um, just to say yeah. about EOS? Uh, Entrepreneur Operating System. So it's basically, if you read Traction, uh, traction book, I think, is a really good one to be able to pick up to start off your journey. But outside of that, I mean, it, it, it's <laughs> well, effectively it's really a, a business management system, how to run yeah. your business in a way that is effective and efficient and all of that. And the right. books are traction is a good one to start with. It's, it's called the EOA system. Just yeah, if you just in, Google in brackets, entrepreneur operating yeah, exactly. system, you should be able to figure it out. Okay, cool. So you go into Asana, we have our issues. And Asana is a, is a software that helps. It's a so it, yeah, it's a project <laughs> management system. Project Sorry, management yeah, you're right. <laughs> so it's a project management system, <clears throat> and we put in a ticket uh, for every single issue. So it might be, um, hey, we need to be able to get we're 100 attendees behind target for the running remote conference, and I don't know how to make up the numbers before the end of the month. As an example, mm -hmm. we start discussing that asynchronously. So we put in comments below that main ticket. <clears throat> and some of these comments, I've seen them like 70, 80, 100 comments long uh, as a debate. So we're discussing these things asynchronously, meaning every single person inside of that group can go and add into the conversation when it's most opportunistic for them and not when it's most opportunistic for the person running that meeting, which is a big difference because that optimize everyone's deep work inside of the organization. So if we come to a conclusion, we take the conclusion, we put it to the top of the ticket and we clear the ticket. Remember, that's still documented. It's still in the archaeological record of our project management systems. So you can go back two years and say, oh, well, we came to this conclusion and look at the 78 comments. We can actually figure out all of the little different aspects of that, you know, of that decision and how we came to that conclusion. But if there's less than three issues per week that show up before we do the call, uh, we don't do the call. 
And we usually do a call about once a week. And the ones that stay up so there. So you're talking, a call is actually when you get on at the same, a, a synchronous, synchronous call. Synchronous a call. Synchronous yes. call. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, synchronous you call, which leave is, it to the asynchronous method. Exactly. So on, and we'd be doing that through Zoom. So we'd yeah. be doing video calls through Zoom. Uh, if you are going to go synchronous, go as high fidelity as humanly possible. So ideally, in person is the best. Then it's video. Then it's audio. Then it's instant messaging. And then it's email. I'm interrupting this episode to share an absolutely wonderful free leadership toolkit I've created and I want you to go and get it. So if you're a CEO and you're great at what you do, but you're frustrated because you're constantly chasing deliverables or putting out fires and you know you can be better by building leadership habits to become a confident, inspiring CEO with a top performing team, then go and grab your free leadership toolkit and training at DaphnaHorovitz.com forward slash leadership toolkit. It's just a matter of creating leadership habits that serve you, your business, and your team to drive the results you want to see. I will show you how in this free training. So go and get it now at DaphnaHorovitz.com forward slash leadership toolkit. And if you're tired of working those crazy hours, shouldering responsibility for all the things with your team just not stepping up enough, here's what you need. The CEO Habits Bootcamp. If you're ready to apply to join the CEO Bootcamp, head on to DaphnaHorovitz.com forward slash CEO Bootcamp. I can't wait to see what that will do for your leadership and your business results. And remember, once you make it a habit, it doesn't take that much time. Now, back to the show. So I do have a question about um, culture and connection, you know, because I think as human beings, I can, and, and this is actually, I'm going to just take a little bit of a segue here in sure. terms of what's happening in the world today, in terms of what I'm seeing with remote work. And that is that companies are actually many, it depends, it depends on the industry and, and the, what the company does, but many companies are desperate to get their people back in the office because they feel like they're losing that connection and culture. And I see many employees, and there's a mix here, but many are desperate to keep and hold on to the flexibility that remote work has provided for them, whereas some find it incredibly distracting to be outside of the office and having an office base is very useful for them for their productivity. So that's really interesting in terms of what's happening because as we said, we were thrown into the situation where everybody had to go remote, virtual, um, and now there's a bit of a comeback of finding out what's really going to work and how's it going to work. And everybody's different and there should be a different, probably a different solution for every organization, maybe even every individual. How does all of that work? And then you taking it way to this other almost futuristic extreme of asynchronous completely. And what does that mean for our culture and connection? So I'm not just throwing a whole lot of things there, but yeah. pick what you want to start with. I, yeah, I think let's touch on culture just as, mm. a, as a core tenant. Um, <clears throat> culture is not about the people that work inside of a company. It's about the mission of the company. And this is the big thing that everyone that's asking to go back to the office <clears throat> looks at culture as the people inside of that organization instead of what that company stands for and if and we have to are, even we have to like pause there for a moment to understand that a little bit more deeply because sure. if you're saying culture is the mission just just let, let's really drill down here because mm -hmm. culture may be um the, the mission in the way i see it is that the mission it provides the framework and the basis for the culture, but it's the people who actually live it and make it into something more tangible through I, their behaviors and interactions. And well, when I when I think about culture, I really think about the reason why people want to come and work at a company, right? It's all of their shared processes and actions and beliefs inside of that organization, right? I so inside of our culture, one of our core tenants was that we work remotely that was very quite rare and it was actually a really good filtering process if you didn't want to be able to work remotely right. then you shouldn't be part of our culture mm -hmm. right so why do i think that that's important and not necessarily whether you get you know pizza thursdays and a cake interesting on your okay okay so i want to pause there for a moment as well because is working remote remotely a culture or is it a way of working that it's it is a way of more working in the how than the yeah yeah, the, so the it's, really is. it's less about the people and it's more about the work, meaning the yes. you can align someone 
the vast majority of companies right now, when you actually see where their culture is put together and the real reasons why people less quit their job, um, is the number one reason actually is their manager. That's the number one reason why people quit today. Um, but one of the reasons because one of the, and the relationship, well, right? The, the relationship and the relationship the, between yeah, those yeah. people. Yeah. And yeah. one of the major reasons why people stay is actually the people inside of that organization. So they'll say, hey, you know, I really don't like my manager, mm -hmm. John, but Susan is great. And yeah. I, you know, and Susan's my work wife and I want to be able to continue to hang out with her. And so what we've created is an environment where no one is actually talking about, OK, am I actually solving a problem that I really am passionate about? And so inside of asynchronous organizations, we're entirely mission focused, meaning and I'll give you an example of what we do. Uh, our mission is we empower the world's transition towards remote work. That's what we've been doing for the past 15 years. If you are not interested in that subject, then you shouldn't work at this company and we get you out of the company as quickly as humanly possible. And we're constantly trying to measure whether or not you actually are still passionate about that particular subject. So inside of most asynchronous organizations, it's the mission that is the alignment towards the culture, not necessarily the people inside of that particular organization. Mm, and that's the differentiator. So inside of, you know, if you're really passionate about the mission that you're trying to solve for, then a lot of the other issues kind of fall by the wayside. Now, also too, you talked about, you know, the great resignation, which I absolutely agree is happening. However, I think the biggest thing that you can possibly do to be able to uh, slow down the amount of term, the amount of people that are leaving your organization is to give people the ability to be able to work that they want to work. Uh, so, you know, we're seeing a lot of people forced back to the office and uh, there was a really interesting statistic that I looked at McKinsey did just recently, which was 77% of managers state that they want to be able to have their employees back to the office more often. And 67% of employees say they don't want, don't they, want to. Are, they don't want to go, they want to go, they want to leave the office more. Right. right exactly so, like, so 77 percent of employers want people in the office and 67 percent of employees don't want to be in the office yeah so it's i like mean just opposite, crazy yeah. crazy numbers now the other thing that's interesting is asynchronous organizations in my study for the book i found that they have on average 50 percent of a thinner layer of man of management inside of their organizations in comparison to on-premise organizations so there are less people doing there are more people doing work inside of asynchronous organizations than there are people managing people doing work inside of on-premise non-remote organizations mm -hmm. and so this is a very interesting phenomenon which just generally boils down to when the platform becomes the manager you don't need as many managers right mm -hmm. and so who are the people that are really pushing people back to the office it's managers why are they really pushing people back to the office because they know that they are effectively redundant in this process. <laughs> okay. <laughs> which is unfortunately <laughs> just the truth of which is the, the truth of the matter here, which is the ability to be able to manage people should really be focused on how are you doing today? The EQ side of management is the only thing that asynchronous organizations work on when we communicate asynchronously or synchronously, fundament or, or synchronously. And we don't necessarily play these games of telephone, which is, you know, oh, Susan, what are your metrics? Okay, I'm gonna go give that to Bob, my manager, and that, that manager is gonna give it to the next manager, and that manager is gonna give it to the boss. Well, inside of asynchronous organizations, a culture of radical transparency allows for everyone to be able to have access to all of those metrics, and they're all automated. So I'm not necessarily putting any of those numbers in, it's all done effectively by the project management system, which is the manager. And then you can very clearly have the same informational advantage as the CEO of the company. So anyone in the company can be like, oh, you know what? John's doing a really bad job, <laughs> or maybe John needs some help here and really focus on that as opposed to playing this game of telephone, which unfortunately has just been the basis of the office, you know, for the past yeah. 80 years, yeah. uh, fundamentally. Yeah. It is. It's definitely a radical way of uh, working. I mean, it's it's radical to think that also all the information is available. So that's your 
your own personal performance metrics, your salaries, you know, all of those things. The only thing that we do hold back is, and there are companies that don't do this, but the only thing that we personally hold back is salary levels. Um, but there are companies right now that also allow for salaries and everything else to be calculated. And there's, there's very specific formulas that are um, very egalitarian towards everyone inside of the organization, which is how much value do you bring and how long have you worked in the company is effectively the way the formula So, so why do you hold back on the salaries? Just because you, you mentioned radical transparency. So yes. what would be the... So Mm -hmm. The only thing that we do hold back is salaries. And the reason why we hold that back is it was definitely something that we had held back for the last, well, since the company started. And it may actually be something that we're thinking about getting rid of, but it was just the process of us pulling back those layers. So as an example, the executive meeting that we have every single week, everyone in the company has the minutes of that and they can watch the recording. And a lot of those those meetings are unfortunately very um, difficult for some people in the organization to watch or to read because some of them may directly be saying, hey, this department is underperforming and they're not doing very well and we may have to cut the numbers back. In which case, by the way, um, they come to us and they say, hey, you know what, you're right. Uh, here are the four things that I can do to possibly change this right now. And or, you know what, maybe we should just call it quits right now and I should leave the company. And that's also a fantastic direction to go because it saves a lot of people time, money, and energy. Interesting, that's interesting. For me, there's still a question around connection. How, how do you build connection between people? Is it not necessary? Is that what you're saying? Actually, it's not necessary. It no, sounds, it's, it's absolutely say, necessary. It sounds like a cold, harsh, you know, reality of let the numbers run your performance, let the, you know, let the, platform guide you uh, have a meeting you know also that the, the asynchronous meeting means that I would imagine you you allocate a time period so it happens over a day that everyone can make their contributions rather than coming together for an hour and I'm not believe me I'm not advocating for meetings because there's way too many meetings but I'm just wondering is there not some happy medium or balance where there is some synchronous stuff happening whether it's team building or meetings or whatever the case may be and Absolutely. connection time because i really do believe that people come to work to fulfill yes and be passionate about the company's mission but there's a connection to your own personal purpose or mission that you want to fulfill mm -hmm as part of coming to work. And for some people, it might be absolutely, I just want to do my deep work and focus on my job and that's it. And I've seen much of that as well. And for some people, it's really about that connection and building their networks and being able to have fun with each other and enjoy their time at work as a social um, element as well. Sure. So first of all, to talk about how kind of we build culture inside of asynchronous organizations. We do it asynchronously as well. So there's a, and there's <laughs> cool. a perfect example that I can push, that I can tell you about that almost everyone probably knows about, which is Reddit. I don't know if you know Reddit, but there's mm -hmm. there are these communities, these subreddits that talk about a particular issue and incredibly deep forms of communication and they interact in, in very intrinsic and interesting ways, but they all interact asynchronously, right? None of them are actually interacting synchronously and actually probably the vast majority of all social media is yeah. asynchronous, asynchronous forms of communication sure. fundamentally, <laughs> but there's still those deep connections that exist, right? Because you still have friends that maybe you've never met mm -hmm. them before in person, but you wouldn't necessarily consider them your friend. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example, which is a company called Todoist, which is the largest task management app on the planet. Uh, they have about 400 employees and they have a uh, they have a Slack channel effectively. They use an application called Twist, which is basically mm -hmm. the same thing as a messaging tool like Slack or like Microsoft Teams. And inside of um, their app, they have built a text video game that everyone actually does as a group. So let's, I don't know if you know those old games from the 1980s where it's like, okay, turn left or turn right. Uh, to the left, you see there's a garden. To the right, you see there's a dark path. Mm -hmm. Do you want to turn right? And so people can actually play these games textually. It's an asynchronous mm -hmm. video game. And then all of you actually end up together. There's like uh, wizards and, and, and archers and, and 
warriors and all that kind of stuff. And they all fight together as a group. And it's a really interesting phenomenon because that game runs constantly 24 seven inside of their organization. It's one of the most active channels inside of yeah, their organization yeah. because they really love those interactions and they talk about it. And, and it's a very, it's a very deep form of integration uh, and culture, but it's completely asynchronous okay. for us. Uh, we actually at every single week at the end of every week, we uh, put on Oculus Rift headsets and uh, we all kind of pop into the metaverse. And we found that that when we do want to be synchronous, we want to go as high fidelity as humanly possible and not necessarily talk about work. So we've created that every single uh, Friday yeah. evening. And it's a really fun spot. Um, we usually have people that we only block off Friday evenings for this event. It's completely voluntary, by the way, do not do do not do culture building at gunpoint. Right. That never works. Of course, that's never um, going to work. <laughs> But the interesting phenomenon that we discovered and what we're only measuring, the only thing we want to measure is the dividends from that activity, which is, do they actually meet in the metaverse outside of the hours that we yeah, stated that you can meet? And that's the yeah. only thing you should be measuring to really figure out the dividends from culture, hmm. in my opinion. Fascinating. I think this conversation has certainly been mind opening in terms of what's possible with remote work because i think the conversation a lot is about do we come into the office or don't we come into the office and this is really taking it to another level of thinking about how do you operate in a, an asynchronous world in a way that can increase efficiency performance and culture and possibly something we haven't talked about but i can imagine also quality of life and work-life balance and all of that, because it's everything then in, in the ideal version of it, everything is really up to you. I do want to add a little bit of a caveat to say that it does remind me of this one movie, which was many, many years ago. I don't know if you remember it with Sandra Bullock, where she was there before, you know, we were as virtual as we are today. But she was doing everything virtually, ordering her food, um, interacting with her friends, whatever. And then someone, I think, stole her identity, if I remember it correctly, and basically mm -hmm. wiped her off the systems. Do you know what movie I'm talking about? I don't remember the yeah, name. Yeah, the, the net. The, the net. That was it. The yes. net. The net. Um, and it just brings that to mind for me a little bit. So, <laughs> so I would not. I, I would suggest people get uh, one of these, and I'm holding up. It's called a, a Titan key. So okay. this so that you may not a, be erased from well, this is my, the metaverse. This is my physical authentication, meaning uh, my passwords, you know, I put in passwords, I put in thumb thumbprints and all that kind of stuff. But this fundamentally is my two factor authentication for the world. And okay. everyone inside of our organization has this, um, you know, getting hacked is not fun. Uh, we we make sure that we have these authentication processes in place to be able to make sure I'm that it just, all works. Listen, I'm just going back to old fashioned. Listen, let's do some things in person and in the real world so that we well, don't. And, and, land and I'll leave you with this: is like a big. I think a a big part of this, which not many people are necessarily getting, and I'm not. I don't think I'm doing a very good job at communicating it. But um, when you go into an office, right? I'm sure you probably in New Zealand. Uh, there's not that much arranged marriage. Well, inside of offices, it's arranged friendships, right? right? It's just these people that you've been good. put together with. And it's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, these are the people that you're supposed to build deep friendships with. And inside of asynchronous organizations, I hang out with my neighbors. I hang, I have little groups that I go to. I get myself out of my bubble. Mm -hmm. Post university, social networks degrade until your 60s. Now, it's a very interesting phenomenon. Why does that happen? Because you leave the work world and you're actually forced to actually interact um, with other individuals and expand your social network. Yeah. So another big part of this is over the last two and a half years, we've obviously had COVID, we've had all these situations where we're kind of shuttered into our homes and we've become a lot less disconnected. But I think that as we move from working from home or working in the office to working from home, we didn't actually get to embrace remote work. So the home and the office are both places. Yeah. Remote work is you can work in an office, you can work at home, you work at a right. coffee shop, you can work at your, you know, your chalet out in the mountains somewhere, you can work wherever you want, whenever you want. And 
you can also choose your friends and you can choose who you want to be able to work with just because yeah. Yeah. you're just because you're working in an office with other people and those people by default are becoming your friendships i mean you can do that in a co-working space you can do that with family and friend and families and friends so for me it's really important for everyone in this new world of remote work which by the way is happening mm -hmm. um it's not going away it's about 35% of the US workforce right now, and it's now going back up uh, as opposed to the drop off. So we've hit the bottom point and we're going right back up the other direction. Most projections put 60% of the US workforce being remote within the next three years. Mm. So we're going to have to adapt to this new reality. Mm. And uh, I think that, you know, having eight hour Zoom calls, basically turning working, working from home into living at work is not the way to be able to do it. There's a better way and I call it asynchronous management. Yeah. Well, it's really, really been fascinating speaking to you. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think we could carry on for, I mean, I certainly have more to talk about and ask and say, but um, we've come to the end of our time. And I, I think it's been really, really interesting for people to just be able to get a taste of what this is about and really look into it further and deeper if they want to so maybe just to end off tell us a little bit about your book because i think that would be sure. the main source of information and also how people can reach you or how you are reachable if they need more than that so over sure. to you so runningremote.com slash book if you go there you can check out the book and we also have a whole bunch of checklists and guides if you don't want to be able to get the book on how to actually do that today <laughs> um, to be able to implement asynchronous management. And we also have our conference, runningremote.com, which we've run for the past five years, which anyone is interested to go and check out as well. If you can't afford the conference or the book, go to youtube.com slash runningremote. All of our talks are up there for free. Mm -hmm. And uh, out of any of those options, I'd love to be able to see you. Probably YouTube is the best form of social media for me. If you comment anywhere there, I'm happy cool. to be able to respond. That's lovely, Liam. Thank you so much and uh, all the best to you. This wraps up another episode of Leadership Live. Thank you for joining us today. And now let's continue the conversation. Do you have any questions, comments or suggestions? Connect with me on LinkedIn or head on to my website at DaphnaHorovitz.com where you can download a free sample of my new book, Weekly Habits for Extraordinary Leaders. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with a friend so that I can continue to reach and support leaders just like you. So tune in next week to Leadership Live, where talented people become extraordinary leaders.